How you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slapped Ham. Today we're looking at some eerie mysteries that have left authorities baffled. But as always, before we dive into these fascinating cases, remember to hit that subscribe button for more creepy content just like this. While some paranormal activity is certainly expected when visiting a well-known site for ghost hunters, one of the last things one might expect is to find physical proof of a crime. Hoping to catch something paranormal on camera is one thing, but finding a dead body is a whole other level of creepy. In the first of many true crime cases on this list, a group of ghost hunters would experience just that during what they thought would be a standard visit to a creep site. Old Coon Memorial State Hospital in Vicksburg, Mississippi is known by locals and ghost aficionados alike to be a hotbed of paranormal activity. Many local groups are familiar with the site, such as the Mississippi Paranormal Research Institute. While the group has permission to visit the site, it would be another group of urban explorers that would call the police after stumbling upon a gruesome site. The abandoned Coon Hospital is a rundown maze, dark and eerie famous for the appearance of apparitions and odd paranormal activity. Bracing themselves for any sort of mysterious activity, one could only imagine the ghost hunter's terror when they stumbled upon the body of a woman dragged outside of the hospital. Unsure whether they had stumbled onto the victim of a crime or someone who had fallen prey to ill-intentioned spirits, the ghost hunters alerted local authorities who quickly tracked down the murderers. The McLeod brothers had murdered and dragged 69-year-old Sharon Wilson from her home after robbing and kidnapping her. It seemed the murderers could think of no better place to hide the body than the already abandoned and creepy Coon Hospital. Which begs the question, are there any other bodies abandoned there? And how many hospital apparitions were victims just like Wilson? There are very few times when a supposed ghost sighting leads to a complete upheaval in national law. But in the case of creepy true crime cases such as this, it's entirely possible. The Hammersmith ghost murder case would go on to set a precedent in UK law regarding the effect of mistaken belief. In this case, the belief that one had seen a ghost in regards to manslaughter. This case dates all the way back to 1803 in the London district of Hammersmith. Rumours of a potentially dangerous ghost haunting the city had begun to swirl around, with the townspeople believing they were being attacked by a suicide victim. As at the time, it was believed that suicide victims shouldn't be buried in graveyards or consecrated grounds, as their souls wouldn't rest. The townspeople soon came to fear the worst. The ghostly rumours came to a head when a group of women, one pregnant and one elderly, claimed to have encountered the ghost. So shocked were they that the women soon passed away. This event, coupled with several other close encounters, would soon lead to a feeling of general unrest among the townspeople. Without a dedicated police force, the town would grow increasingly panicked about the supposed ghost's presence. Things would come to a head when 29-year-old exciseman Francis Smith decided to take the hunt for the ghost into his own hands. As he told the night watchman William Girdler to meet him that night in order to take care of the ghost once and for all, Smith would shortly seal his own fate. Smith did in fact encounter the supposed ghost that night, and taking the law into his own hands would fire a fateful shot. Horrified, Smith discovered he had shot bricklayer Thomas Millwood, a man dressed in white trousers typical of his trade at the time. The trial of Francis Smith would go on to set legal precedent in the United Kingdom, with the legal ruling being that he had not acted in self-defence and he had been unprovoked nor had he attempted to subdue the supposed apparition first. One of few creepy paranormal true crime cases that would go on to have a lasting effect on the law hundreds of years later. Francis Smith's guilty verdict changed the course of history. Sometimes those who investigate the supernatural have their own set of woes far more worrisome going on behind the scenes. It seems this was true in the case of Mark and Debbie Constantino, stars of the Travel Channel's Ghost Adventures. 
Although the couple appeared on screen together attempting to solve the mysteries of the paranormal, things were not exactly pleasant between the two off screen. In fact, the story of their own relationship would go on to become one of the many creepy true crime cases related to TV stars. According to police reports, Mark and Debbie had lived in an abusive relationship for years, with Debbie often allegedly physically harming her husband. While the exact timeline of abuse and mistrust in their relationship may never be known, it's clear that things would go from bad to worse. It seemed the couple was finally giving in and ending their relationship after years of abuse, as the couple was scheduled to appear in court in order to finalise their divorce proceedings. This, however, wouldn't be good enough for Mark Constantino, who felt the need to take far more drastic measures. The police would be alerted to Debbie Constantino's disappearance from her home in September 2015, with the man they would later learn to be her boyfriend found dead in the home. With Mark Constantino already a suspect in the man's murder, the police were now dealing with a potential kidnapping case on the part of Debbie's husband. Tracking her cell phone to their daughter's apartment, the police would find themselves confronted with the sound of shots being fired as they approached the door. Hauntingly, Mark Constantino would tell the police to give him some time, stating, 15 minutes to gather my thoughts or I'll kill her. Constantino would go on to murder his wife before turning the gun on himself. Luckily, not all domestic true crime cases end with a successful murder. Such was the case of one Noella Rocundo, the woman who watched her own funeral from a distance in Melbourne, Australia. Rocundo's story would start with another funeral. After the death of her stepmother, Rocundo had returned home to her native Burundi. What should have been a time for her to grieve and pay her respects, Rocundo found herself the victim of a kidnapping. Receiving a phone call from her husband telling her to leave her hotel room in order to go outside and get some fresh air, Rukundo would think nothing of it. It was only when she had gone outside that she found herself face to face with a man pointing a gun at her. Quickly blindfolded and stuffed into a vehicle after being threatened, it would take about half an hour for the men to arrive at their destination. The first thing the men would ask her, however, was what she had done to make her husband pay them to kill her. Bewildered and claiming her husband would never do such a thing, Rukundo would be in for a shock when the kidnappers got her husband on the phone, his voice echoing out as he gave them the order, kill her, he had said. Those words would haunt Rukundo for years to come. Just when Rukundo began to accept her bleak fate, the men surprised her. They didn't believe in killing women. In fact, it turned out the men knew her brother. The men planned on taking her husband's money, telling him they had done it, and setting her free, giving Rukundo a second chance at life. With the help of her pastor back in Australia, Rukundo would return home in order to formulate her plan. When she got home, Rukundo discovered her husband had told everyone she had already died in an accident, which is when Rukundo knew she would be confronting her husband at her own funeral. Rukundo's husband would go on to plead guilty, stricken by the image of his supposedly murdered wife appearing at her own funeral. Although Rukundo would be left to deal with the trauma of her husband's betrayal, as well as raise their eight children all by herself, Rukundo would go on to affirm that she would stand up like a strong woman, starting a new life, making this one of a few creepy true crime cases with a rare happy ending. Before we get to that number one spot and take a look at a strange case with a man claiming he was infected with mayonnaise, remember to hit that subscribe button and tickle the bell icon. That way you'll be notified about all our strange and mysterious content. However, as we've seen, Rukundo's exception is not the norm for creepy true crime cases, especially when they involve domestic violence. Such is true in the case of Nathaniel Robertson, who would go on to beat his wife Lydia to death after allegedly being infected with mayonnaise by an unknown group. It would take the police little to no time to ascertain that Robinson's delusions were likely due to his frequent drug use. A regular crystal meth user, Robertson would tell detectives that he'd killed his wife in order to give her compassion and mercy, 
and that the alignments were not in place to protect her. Perhaps even stranger, Robinson would go on to say that he had something within him that was releasing information about the Revolutionary War. When asked how he had been infected by mayonnaise, Robinson would go on to blame a group he could only refer to vaguely as they. For all his drug-induced ramblings, Robinson would still make a point of telling police that his wife had been his best friend. Robinson would assert that he loved his wife and hadn't wanted her to die painfully, despite having beaten her to death with a block of concrete. If you want more scary mysteries, then check out that video on the top there. Otherwise, there's a playlist there you can binge on. Now, leave us a comment down below. What are your thoughts on some of these cases? Love to get your feedback. And that's it for me. I'll see you all next time.